What's up, War Report family? It's your boy C Dub. Auburn is at the half, tied up at 17. Let's get into this halftime show and talk about it. Special shout out to Prize Picks for being a sponsor of our halftime show. Guys, please support us by supporting our sponsors. To do that, head over to Prize Picks, use code Rapport, where you will get a 100% deposit match up to $100 on your first deposit. And as always, we want to show love to Prize Picks. I'm joined by B. Will. We're at the half. Talk to me. What did you see in the first half? What didn't you see? How you feeling? Well, I saw a great game for about two a uh, quarter and a half right there. And then uh, we let them get a little more rhythm than I would have liked to. We should have had that last interception on the last drive. So, yeah, it's what's crazy is you drop a P, uh, P I a K, and then you give up a TD. And, you know, you know how that works, man. It's like it's you crazy have how a sure handed in a, uh, turnover, and then they just go on the score. Yeah, I, I'm not so down on the defense because they they're holding down an offense that scores like way more than this in a in a half. So they're doing a good job, but it's kind of like with with offense. If there's a wide open receiver on a play and you miss them, it's it's, it's going to matter. You know, that's seven points on a missed wide receiver. And in this case, you got the the ball in your hands for a pick. You got to come down with who have the potential to score regularly so the longer you keep them out of rhythm and from really getting going in the game the better it is for for our offense we need a lead in order for our run game to stay effective um we've been moving the ball through the air a little bit too i, I can't be discouraged by what we've seen on offense or defense but that last drive was not good that was great for their momentum and bad for ours so hopefully we can get it back coming out of half yeah i'm i'm a little disappointed defensively i'm yeah. not even gonna lie to you i'm a little disappointed defensively just because we play well in spurts, and then we'll just give up a big chunk play. Yeah, and that's that's really and that's kind of what Caddy was talking about going into the uh, going into the half is we have to get we have to eliminate those major big plays, and I think doing that um, doing that has been kind of frustrating at times, especially knowing that to your point, the offense is actually playing rather well. Uh, right. We know how points are, have been coming at a premium. So for them to be moving the ball the way that they have, you just got to get a few more stops, man. Right. So it's kind of been frustrating to see that. Uh, let's get to some of the super chats. You guys are in here commenting. Uh, B. Will's forehead says, I expected to get more pressure on the QB. You know, Auburn really, that that's really hasn't been the game plan, it, it looks like at times. Um, I, I would have liked to have seen it at certain points, but we've been seeing a lot of uh, three down linemen, uh, three linemen on the front. Uh, they've mostly been dropping guys back and just kind of playing zone and trying to defend the field. But what have you been seeing, B? Yeah, I'm, when we do that, we, well, we came into the game saying we should be able to get pressure because I've seen us do it pretty much at will the last two games. It took us until the second half at Mississippi State to decide, okay, let's go get the great passer and get them uncomfortable. I don't know why that's not the case here. At least four yeah. down linemen, um, five if it's necessary. Now, the thing that you might fear a little more with with Western Kentucky is that they are equipped with two great workers to handle uh, the blitz a little better. Um, short routes, altern alternative routes on plays where pressure might be coming and uh, an experienced enough quarterback to make us pay for a blitz. But we haven't really tried it yet. So I don't know. I, I tried. Now, I think I still think our DBs are playing well. Our DBs, our DBs are playing well. They're in position to make plays. They haven't made all the plays they can make. got to make so, them. I would feel different. Okay, we haven't been pressuring them, but we got two picks. So, yeah, it looks like the game plan is working, right? But when you don't get those picks, now it looks it makes the game plan look bad because if we're going to play that zone and we're going to play coverage instead of pressure, well, you got to come up with those plays because the zone is supposed to get you those opportunities for INTs, and if we're not taking advantage of them, now you almost have to try to get the guy uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are, are you saying that we're having an execution problem, to quote a former head coach at Auburn? We we might, you know, uh, we, we might be, <laughs> you know, perhaps, you know what I'm saying? But 
Oh, I'm, we've been on their wide receivers, though. That's I mean, it's encouraging to see that play from my yeah, for sure, for backs. sure. For but sure. you got to close the deal all almost, you know, it's just not quite good enough. You got to finish it, man. You're getting that pressure on those wide receivers. You're making uh, making them secure the catch very quickly because we're like right there on them. I'm I'm encouraged, but we're going to have to get some pressure on the QB to be Wells Forehead's point. <laughs> that, that sounds funny to say. We got to get some pressure on the QB. For sure. For sure. Rick is commenting, says our inability to get pressure on the QB doesn't bode well for the second half. Uh, or the game next week. Again, I think I think this is where we see some adjustments be made, to your point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to see what uh, Schmetting does in the second half. Do we come after this QB? Do we do we come up with creative ways to get to him? Um, because you have to be anticipating that they're not going to be playing back in the second half. They're going to be coming for him. So right. it becomes a bit of a chess match at this point. So I'm curious to see if we continue with this approach that we've had so far because they're even with us. And we know that they can move the ball. Right. Can we continue to move it? And what can we do to stop them from moving it? Lee right. Band says, our run defense sucks. We have no QB. And can this season just end already? Well, <laughs> they've only rushed for 68 yards. So I understand the frustration at times, but it's not like they've just been running it down our throat. So I think the biggest thing is that them passing the ball has been able to open up the run like the big and that to me, it boils down to those chunk plays. The chunk plays has led to them being able to open up some running opportunities and gaps for them. And we've seen them try to exploit that on some third and long situations yeah. where they tried to run the ball because they've, they're seeing some things. So I think we haven't been getting gashed there. Uh, we could be playing a little, we've been missing some tackles here and there, but mm -hmm. for the most part, the issue has just been chunk plays on defense uh, as far as I've seen. But your thoughts, B? Yeah, it's been chunk plays. It's been chunk plays. And to James Barnett's point, um, he's saying we had two picks right in our hands. Are, are we tired? I think it's focus. I, I, yeah. I think focus is the issue. When you get a ball in your hands, like DJ James, like that was it's right there, man. DJ was thinking about where to run. He was thinking he, yeah. he, was, he was thinking he was in the end zone. That's really all that is. As someone who's, who's played football years ago, I can recall on moments like that, you're so wide open. It's mm -hmm. thrown right to you. You're thinking about what's the next move. Your mind shifts to what I'm going to do after I get this ball, and you don't secure the catch. That's right. typically what happens there. Um, but, it, again, it, it should have been – should have come down with it, but – Frustrating to see. Let's let's talk about let's talk offense real quick. Now we we placed a we placed a pick on on Tank. Right. Tank has carried the ball ten carries for twenty three yards. You still feeling good about him getting over a hundred in this game? What you think? Um. So I didn't expect them us to throw as much as we have this game. I expected us to force it, make it all run, run, run. There's still a chance because. I think there's a plan, uh, opportunity for us to get some big chunk yardage in the run game. Um, I don't think it's going to have to be a uh, a whole 20 more carries. This probably could come in 10 carries if we're going to get the, the gash plays that we want to get, the chunk yardage that we want to get. Um, if I had to guess now, I'd say probably not on that 100, but it's not impossible. You know, we, we are a running offense. We have a, a head coach who wants to try to run the ball for sure. So I expect us to, to be a little more physical and determined with the run game in the second half do you think it's the time to start kind of incorporating robbie into a bit of that run game and using tank as a decoy because they're coming when they see tank they're just flying to the backfield it seems i'm seeing eight people crowd the box a little bit is it time to kind of use tank as a decoy because obviously they're attacking when he's in there yeah i think they're gonna have to but that's what that's what being Robbie buys you. I mean, well, Tank buys you that type of attention on him, first of all. So the, the passing game should open up, and we have had opportunities in the passing game. Hate that, you know, Shed dropped that one because it's in his hands, like literally in – really know what happened there. But um, the pass the pass has been there, and for the most part, Robbie's capitalized. He did miss one and two. So – I don't I don't know if the game plan is is bad. Like the game plan looks like it's sound. Um, I don't think we've taken advantage of all our opportunities on offense or defense. It probably should be a 24 to maybe 10 type game right now is what we should be looking at. I really would have liked Shed to come down with that that, that pass though. Yeah, me too. Me yeah. Too. But I'm I'm not too the the discouraged. I've seen us play better in the second half 
under for both games of the canning. I yeah. expect that to continue. No, no, no question in my mind. I expect that to continue. So uh, I'm not worried yet. I, I'm, I'm one gummy worried. One gummy. One gummy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. A, I mean, again, the game plan doesn't look bad. It doesn't look like it's been bad or questionable. It's just been the execution at times has been off. Um, and credit to West uh, Western Kentucky, they can move the ball. They can definitely move the ball. I just think that both. You're going to need both the offense and the defense in this game. I don't right. think you're going to have one phase of the game carrying the other. Everyone has to everyone has to show up in the second half to get this dub. Let's get to some of the comments. Uh, Joe Kyle says, Robbie doesn't look settled, not running much and missing throws. Thoughts on that, B? Um, I, I wonder if him not running is by design just to kind of get their defense comfortable. They came in expecting Robbie, Robbie to run all over the place. And he has it, which is probably part of the reason that the pass has been there. Yeah. Count for him and both running backs has created other opportunities. He hasn't taken advantage of all of them, but he has taken advantage. I would expect to see something different than what they've shown so far in the first half. In the second half, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were going to flip the script halfway through no matter what. So that's what I expect to see. Do you do, now Jarquez has six carries on 48 yards. Do we just mm. see more of Jarquez in the running game? What are your thoughts there? I think you see more of both, both those guys. I don't think it's going to be Jarquez more than Tank. I think it's going to be equal share. Both of those guys getting lots of touches. Jarquez is just a – his running style is so unorthodox. Like, his the way he's, he moves his legs when he's running, believable balance when he has to get low or break a tackle where he almost falls, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, – it's crazy. Like, Tank doesn't have that balance. I think he's got more quickness to him. Um, but Jarquez has more – I don't know. It's – I don't even call it shake or shimmy. It's it's weird, but it's phenomenal. <laughs> He's yeah. got that. Um, I think we see both. I think we see a lot of both, though. B. Will's forehead comes back again and says, would, would Anders have made the 51-yard field goal? No. Now, I asked, you about, I asked you about special teams. Would that be a story in this game? Looks like special teams may become a bit of a bit of a factor in this game. So far, so good because Alex McPherson has hit a 51 yarder. And I have to go back to the last time we have hit a 51 yarder. It may have been towards the beginning of last year, maybe. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Hmm. So it was it was a it was a sight for sore eyes for sure. Uh, I was happy to see it. But thoughts on special teams, man. Special teams done the job. So we, we can't really complain about special teams. Um, McPherson hitting the 50. If I know I got a kid that, that's good from 50, cool. That means I need to get to the 35 for points. I need to be trying to get to the 35 for points. I mean, you're trying to get touchdowns, but the 35 for points is much better than formerly. I, we got to get to the 25 for points. So, yes, glad to see it. It it could be worse. I hope I still hope it doesn't come down to needing some kicks. You know what? I'm I'm comfortable if it if it does. Right, right, right. Uh, let me ask you this. What what should we expect to see different in the second half? Let's start defensively. What are some things that B-Will wants to see? And we want to hear from you guys in the comments as well. What are some things you definitely want to see in the second half that will, will get Auburn its fifth win of the season? They got to bring some more people at the quarterback. I want to see them rush people. Marcus Harris going down is big because he's an outstanding player. So um, my guess is Burks will be in there, probably Emba as well. I want to see some pressure, and it's probably going to have to be from bringing more people. A team that throws as much as they do is probably not going to have uh, a problem blocking three guys. They, they've they probably seen it all. When you throw as much as they do, I'm sure they've seen plenty of attempts to try to throw them off the game and get their quarterback off schedule and off his spot. So we're going to have to do something, maybe not exotic, but it's going to have to be more than just four people we're sending to get to the quarterback, but that's what I want to see. Yeah, um, I definitely want to see some more pressure. And what I'm surprised with, B, is I expected to see something like what we saw against Mississippi State where there's a quick right. throw. They're actually throwing and pushing the ball down the field, which means you have some – these are kind of some slower developing plays because your receivers have to get downfield, which means you got some time to, like, really get after the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely want to see that, that time in the pocket shrink We've seen what happens when we did get a little bit of pressure in him in the first half. He wasn't as accurate when he felt that pressure coming. 
so if we can continue to do some of that and be creative with our pressures, I definitely want to see that on defense. For sure. Uh, Chase Rouse says, I want to see more pressure. Well, I'm right there with you, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, Greg says, I want to see some tutties. So in other words, <laughs> and, and I misread that. <laughs> you funny. Uh, he but wants I want to see those too. I want to see those too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, but we definitely, but we got to score it. We got to keep scoring. We're not going to get it done uh, scoring 20 points for the game or 24 points. We got to put some points on the board in the second half to, to pull away. Uh, sure. Stephen Kerr says catching interceptions would be a start. I am right yes. there with it you. It would be nice. True words have not been spoken. Chase Rouse says can't let the quarterback get comfortable in the pocket. He left the second half feeling real conf confident. Got to switch some things up for him to where that confidence begins to wane a little bit. So offensively, offensively, what are some things you want to see in the second half? Uh, real quick, I think they're about to, to kick back. Offensively, I want to see more run. I know they've given us the pass. The pass has been available, but I want to see us intentionally run the ball and, and really just physically take control of the game. I think that's our best chance to win it. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely continue to do what we do. Um, I think capitalize off of what Western Kentucky is doing because we're taking what they're giving. And I like some of the short passes we implemented in the first half. Those are, mm -hmm. those were some of the easy throws I've been wanting to see in this offense for quite some time and getting Robbie settled. And right. I think when you see him be able to complete those throws, he's more, he's less likely to press. And so I, I, the game slows down a bit. So give him a little bit more of those easy throws. Um, I definitely want to see us continue to run the ball with our running backs. We'll definitely see that. Uh, we haven't seen a Damari Austin sighting, so I'm curious if right. he gets into the game. But I'm pretty sure Tank is going to get his fair share of carries. So is Jarquez. We we're going to continue to, to, to run the ball down their throats or at least attempt to. Uh, Misa AT Alien says, hold on to the ball. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Don't think we'll be as fortunate this week as we was last week when we start uh, fumbling the football. Trace Rowell says, on offense, we need to complete passes that are easy. I'm right there with you. Uh, Ethan Lowry says, we need more misdirection on offense, whether it's with two back sets and those sweeps to tank on Jarquez with good wide receiver blocking. Thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree completely. Let's get some more backs on the field, give them some confusion, and and take advantage of what hopefully they haven't seen a lot of in their conference play. I mean, we got unique athletes over here, man. What we do if we mix up the run game, it should be able to work. For sure, for sure. It was also encouraging to see Harris um, come back as well. So, guys, we're about to get ready to come back and start the, uh, start the second half. We will be here post-game. Uh, definitely check with us at the end of the game as we'll break down the entire game. We'll see you then. War Eagle guys, enjoy the second half. Hopefully, if it's a, it's a good one. War Eagle.